Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do something very complicated and borderline pointless, but I hope that together we're going to learn something. So in this video, I'm going to try to recreate all the different percussion sounds from the TR-808 synth. And to do that, I'm going to be using the block diagrams provided in the synths manual. The point is not to make exact copies of the sounds. It's more to learn how these circuits are designed so that we can learn how to make better drums ourselves. Here is a block diagram. It's a type of a diagram that illustrates all the different functions in a circuit. The oscillators, the filters are represented as these squares. In here, we can find all the different sounds and the ways that they are constructed. So here's the snare drum, the low tom, the mid tom, the high tom, clap, the bass drum. Simple. What's going to happen in a patch here? I have this interface here that I did the other day and I'm going to make this work in a way that every instrument is going to be routed to their own key. And this is going to be done using the VFX key mapper. So with this one, I can route a key into whatever key I want to. I'm just going to do this process for every single instrument. This is basically how everything's going to work. I'm going to use FL plugins and build all the same components right here. Now I'm going to start going over the voicing board, which is this part right here. It contains the open hat, the closed hat, the cymbal, the cowbell. So the way that these sounds are created is that there are six pulse wave oscillators, each set to different frequencies, and then they go through different types of filters and envelopes. Starting from the symbol, all of the oscillators are separated into a high and a low range using two bandpass filters. And then the high range is further separated into two more different ranges. And then all of these three ranges go through high pass filters. So here in my patch, I've already done the symbol and I'm using citrus as the oscillator. So here's my citrus. I just have the pulse waves. I didn't figure out the actual frequencies used in the TR-808 because I just thought that it's a lot more useful to just listen to what it sounds like and kind of tune it based on that. Yeah, actually, I did find this very interesting document describing details about the TR-808 symbol and I found the frequencies. So if you want to copy the exact frequencies, they are right here in this document. It also contains all sorts of other useful information about the sounds that I actually do end up utilizing in this video as I'm trying to improve the sounds for the final preset. When it comes to pulse width of the waveform, you can also kind of play around with that too. Where is Q17? Can't see a damn thing. I need to zoom right in. Let's try to make the closed hat. So there's only one signal that seems to be coming into the closed hat. The one that goes through the first bandpass filter. One thing that we need to do differently is that we actually need to copy the citrus instance because you can't make multiple MIDI inputs and that's a problem because I need to be able to do this routing thing. I'm gonna copy this. Okay, so where does this go? Because there's, there's no way to do it. Well, no, I don't. I don't because this is not gonna go anywhere. There's no sound coming out of that one. So yeah, I can use the same bandpass filter, clearly. But then that's also gonna wait. Okay. Mm. Yay, I'm in a pattern. Mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of just the same thing as the closed hat, but it's just... It basically just the same thing, but with a differently shaped envelope. So I'm going to activate yet another articulator. Clone this. Clone this. Connect, connect, connect. A. Now it's an A. 
Let's try if it works. All right. So this is going to be called Cowbell. Let's just try some shit out again. I mean, let's just try and listen and learn and fun. And I guess I'm just going to disable all of these and leave two operators. Well, if it sounds good, it is good um maybe we have to work with this just a little bit okay it's still not perfect but i'm happy enough with it i need to fix this problem of so at this point, I realized that I made this kind of like a fundamental design flaw when it comes to this patch, and that causes this weird behavior in the piano roll. And the problem is that previously, I controlled the envelopes with an envelope controller and fruity balance. When I put notes on the piano roll, envelope controller is gonna re-trigger all the envelopes of all the instruments. And that is why I shifted all the envelope stuff directly inside Citrus. One other problem with the envelope controller and balance is also that there is no true release time. Like, Related if you make the note so shorter, you're not gonna... So I added the functionality on these knobs, so now I have the tone knob for the symbol. And that basically controls the cutoffs of one of these high pass filters. You could connect it to the other ones too and make some sort of a, a range using formula controller, but I'm just gonna keep it this way for now because it sounds kind of cool. Then I have the DK. I've just connected it to the Citrus main panel volume envelope. I also made a tuning option for the cowbell. So you can... And I did that by routing the two oscillators to mod X and then just activating mod X and connecting that to pitch or tuning knob. Okay, so now my symbol section is finally finished. <laughs> Here's the snare drum and it has two oscillators. The other one is more of a pure sign tone and the other one is more harmonic. And with the tone control, you can adjust between the two. And then he has the snappy adjustment, which is adjusting white noise and the decay time of that. So for the white noise is coming into the snare right here. Here is my snare and it has this sign tone tuned to 160 hertz and then he has this other tone and you could put a triangle wave on there but i just adjusted this sign shaper and then the snappy is some white noise and what i did was put the noise through a bandpass filter and a high pass filter this is just my own thing to make it sound a little bit better <laughs> so with the bandpass i've enabled the next knob it just routes it through the next filter and i also have the wave shaper enabled for the bandpass filter i also put maximus to the snare and saturated it to oblivion because it sounds good i'm just gonna show what the snappy control does So, so now you have just the fundamental. And I can also make it really long. Hello, I'm from the future. And I forgot to mention that one very good tip for the snare is that you should make a pitch envelope for it. It kind of emphasizes the transient. And the other thing that you can also do is adjust this phase knob right here so you can get this like really sharp click on the sound. Okay, that's all. Bye! Let's move on! These sawtooth shaped 
pulses are a very essential part of the clap sound. I've loaded this clap sample. You can actually see pulses right here, in the waveform. And I thought that I would do that by copying the snare, isolating the white noise part, and then just adding that volume modulation. So this type of a shape. So it's four pulses with the last one being a little bit longer so that you can get kind of like a tail for the clap. And adjusting the tension of this point will give you different kinds of results. This is kind of like a very crunchy clap. Then if you bring it up, it's more of a washed out clap. Still needs a little bit of work. I'm using the band pass and the high pass filter again, just like the snappy part of the snare. I've actually modulated some of these parameters, mainly the band pass cutoff and the resonance. Like you can make all sorts of cool claps using this method. I kind of like this tiny clap. It's cute. I recorded claps in Edison and then just compared it to this reference. So as you can see, the first version was kind of weird. Not quite there. The second one is like kind of getting closer. Then the third one. That's actually... Now I'm gonna make the... Maracas? Ma Maracas? Maracas. Maracas! <laughs> so my camera died, but let's continue. Anyway, I have now made the maracas. It's basically just an inverse clap. I made the shape, which is kind of like, well, the opposite of the shape of the clap. And it sounds like this. It has this switch where you basically just switch between the maracas and the hand clap. I made this toggle button using the formula controller. I'm actually surprised that this is like the first thing that I have needed the formula controller for in this project. Like it's still very simple. It's just the inversion. So it'll invert the master volume knob whenever this is not selected. And then when it is selected, it will put the maracas volume to full. Let me show you like that and then the clap volume is gonna go to zero. So this is like a very basic application in Patcher, how you can do like this kind of like a toggle switch using the formula controller. The reverb knob is just adding some noise. So I added this functionality to the clap as well because I noticed from the block diagram that it also has a different envelope for a different type of a noise sound. So this kind of shape but i added these additional controls where you can take it off completely and then it enable it same for the clap and i also put a dk control in there so yeah that is the maracas and the clap. I might still change them and look at the actual 808 for more reference, but I'm just gonna move on for now. I'm back. So the bass drum has one oscillator and the main function of it is to produce a sine wave that drops in pitch very rapidly. And the decay function adjusts the length of the kicks. So my bass drum is just a sine wave tuned to 49.5 Hertz and has this pitch envelope where at the start, it very rapidly goes down to produce a very strong transient. And then I also have a volume envelope. This is what my bass drum sounds like. And I added some additional controls again. So the tone adjustment adjusts the cutoff of a low pass filter. So I have the filter right here. And I have the wave shaper enabled. So I added this knob where you can adjust the mix of that distorted signal. And then it has, of course, the decay option. 
that you can use to make the cake shorter. Let's move on. The toms also have one oscillator, but then they're also mixed in with this white noise. I'm just gonna try to make it out of this bass drum. So let's just tune this. By the way, this knob right here is very useful in adjusting your envelopes. So when I turn it down, it's gonna kind of like reduce the range, I guess. Like the range of this pitch envelope is gonna be a lot larger. And if you turn it down, it's, there's nothing left. <laughs> I added the congas and I have this switch right here and the tom has that little bit of a white noise added to it as you can hear it kind of gives it like almost like a reverb this was something that I hadn't thought about before that like by adding just like a white noise with an envelope you can make this artificial reverb sound and these congas in this patch are a little bit different than the toms, so they're just not the toms pitched up. I actually did this thing where I feed this kind of like a triangle slash a sawtooth. I'm feeding it through two filters. And these filters, like this first filter is actually self-oscillating, so it has a very high resonance. And when I adjust this, I turn the resonance down. It's just like a like a click. And I could have done the congas also with just like a sine wave. I feel like this sounds a little bit more interesting. I think it sounds more like a a conga. Clave. 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 It actually follows the same kind of principle as the conga, so it's just like a filter that is oscillating. And I actually have this first operator set to zero hertz, and I have the phase turned up a little bit, so if I don't have anything there, you can't hear anything, but when I turn the phase up, it kind of starts to feed it into the filter. Like, I'm not sure why it does that. If anybody can explain, please leave a comment. And again, you could tune it by adjusting this cutoff, so... Wow, that's very interesting. This kind of has this, like, a plastic-like tone. <laughs> but when you pitch it up, I think it sounds pretty cool. Then the rim shot. Once again, I guess it's time to just try some shit out. So this is what my rim shot currently sounds like. It's like it has that metronome click quality, if you know what I mean, but I have a reference here and it has this like interesting tone that I couldn't quite figure out how to recreate. I'm gonna try to tweak it just a little bit and try to find some more information. If there's anybody watching out there who could explain the function of the rimshot circuit, please do. I would be very interested to know what actually is going on with it, so yeah. So here is my rimshot, and I just have this sine wave that I've shaped to have a bit more harmonic content. And I have a very, very quick volume envelope. And then again, I have a high pass filter with a pretty high resonance value. And also the wave shaper is enabled. And with that, I was able to produce this type of a sound. And if I adjusted this, it's going to get a little bit more. This kind of like sounds like a knock. Yeah, I mean, basically now I have every instrument done. <laughs> Yay! So this is no accent.
the 808 has this accent feature and that is related to the sequencing capabilities so you can accent specific beats using this function but obviously that's like there's no sequencer in patcher so i came up with this formula controller lfo groove function i made this lfo curve I initially thought of making multiple options, but um, I'm probably not going to do that for this project. I have these instances of Fruity Balance, the volume activated, and I just output this LFO curve into them. That's quite a lot of Fruity Balances. I initially thought of making like this kind of like a switch to for the accent for each instrument, but I was lazy. And now it's basically that you can just disconnect this if you don't want the accent to be enabled for a specific instrument. And then the accent is just fed into this master switch where you can turn it on. So I have the A parameter enabled. A parameter is multiplied with this equation. When the accent is disabled, you just get a steady level like that. And then when the accent is enabled, you get the curve. I've also enabled the C parameter and made this level adjustment for the accent. So I'm just multiplying the C value with my equation. I've connected this the wrong way now. So like it's, it's inverse of what it's supposed to be. But yeah, when it's full, it's like very strong. And when I turn it down or up in this case, it turns it becomes smaller and if anybody's curious on how this equation works exactly i have this frac function like with this you can make a sawtooth lfo shape and then the song time is how you can basically get the the tempo or the song position and then when i'm adding these two together i can make goes if i just had like a single frag function it would just be a regular shaped sawtooth lfo but when i add them together i can make more complicated lfo shapes so if i take one of these values out i'm just left with this simple shape i think my patch is finally done <laughs> most of these sounds i uh, i'm I've already been familiar with how to synthesize them, but, but definitely some of these techniques were new to me, like using the white noise for reverb. And, and if you weren't that familiar with patcher, I hope that now you can see what all sorts of cool things you can do using patcher. Like you can make your own drum machine and you can make your own synth. I mean, obviously the interface is a little bit difficult for a larger project because <laughs> like yeah, things become kind of difficult to control when you have a lot of plugins, but I mean, I don't really care. I like, I like doing projects like this and yeah. So I will put a link in the video description so that you can download this patch for yourself if you want it. And yeah, I hope you like this video and give it a like and maybe subscribe to my channel if you want to see more FL Studio synthesis music production stuff. I don't know. See you in the next video. Bye.